Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this particular episode of Snoozad Questions with Solutions, we're going to be looking at some sample questions relating to the Snoozad examination, particularly from the subject of physics. So let's start off with our first question for this video. If the temperature of a black body increases from 300 degrees Kelvin to 900 degrees Kelvin, then the rate of energy radiation increases by how many times? 81, 3, 9, or 2. So <clears throat> how do we solve this question? Well, we're talking about temperature of a black body and the energy radiation from a black body. So we're going to be using the Stefan, the Stefan um, Boltzmann law. Stephen Boltzmann law. Now, according to this law, um, the energy radiation um, is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. Now, we're going to apply this for our black body. <clears throat> T1 is 300 degrees Kelvin, T2 is 900 degrees Kelvin. Um, so E1 over E2, that's initial energy over final energy, which is basically the energy rate, um, equals T1 over T2 raised to the power 4. So we're going to have 300 over 900 raised to the power four. So the two zeros cancel each, out, each other. Um, three goes into nine thrice. So basically we have one by three to the power of four. E1 over E2 will now be equal to one over three to the power four. Now three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, 27 times three, if you do that, will be 81. So E1 by E2 is 1 by 81. That means E2 will be equal to 81 times E1. So the rate of energy radiation increases by 81 times. So option A turns out to be the right option. 3 would be 3 to the power 1. 9 would be 3 to the power 2. 2 would be 2 to the power 1. So all three of these options are incorrect. Because according to the Stefan Boltzmann law, we need to uh, take temperature to the fourth power, and that quantity would be proportional to that quantity uh, will be dependent on the energy radiation. So the energy radiation is proportional to um, t to the power of four, where t is temperature. So using that, we found out e2 equals 81 times e1. So the rate of energy radiation increases by 81 times. Now let's move on to another question. A juggler keeps on moving four balls in the air, throwing the balls after intervals. When one ball leaves his hand and the speed is given as 20 meters per second, the position of the other balls in meters will be, we're gonna take G as 10 meters per second squared. Is it 10, 20, 10, 15, 20, 15, 5, 15, 20, 5, 10, 20? Well, let's look at the ball that leaves the juggler's hand, all right? So one ball leaves the juggler's hands, hand, and we know that the initial speed u is 20 meters per second. Now, these balls are thrown in the air. That means the final velocity v will be equal to zero. And we are asked to take g as 10 meters per second squared. Um, we're going to use Newton's. I mean, we're not going to use the Newton's laws of motion. We're going to use the equations of motion. Since we're talking about motion in a straight line, we're going to be using the first equation of motion.
Now the first equation is V is equal to U plus AT. Um, now since um, the acceleration here is acceleration due to gravity, we're going to take negative G as A. So therefore, um, V at this case is 0, U is 20, and it'll be minus 10 times T. We don't know what the time we don't know the time it takes to go from the juggler's hand to the highest point. So we're going to calculate that. So 10t equals 20, which means t equals 2 seconds. So t equals to 2 seconds is the time for the ball to reach highest point. which means that the total time for the ball to return to the juggler's hand is four seconds. So for one ball, it takes four seconds to go from the juggler's hand through the air and back into the juggler's hand. Now remember, the juggler is moving four balls um, in the air, throwing after intervals. So when he is juggling four balls, um, each ball released at one second intervals so each ball is being released after one second so he throws the ball at the first second at the second second he re releases the second ball the third second he releases another ball and at the fourth second four he releases the last ball and catches the first so that's how it works um so we're we're gonna need to find the position of the other balls when one of them is being released so the position of the other balls. So, um, ball released one second ago. Let's, uh, uh, you know, denote it as H1. And initial velocity U is 20. Um, time varies and uh, g equals 10 meters per second squared. Just to put these quantities here, so it'll be 20 times the time here is 1 minus half times 10 times 1, which is 20 minus 5, 10 by 2 is 5 which is equal to 15 meters. So H1 is 15 meters. Now when the ball is released two seconds ago, like in two seconds before the particular scenario at hand, that will be H2, its height, it will be H2. So that will be 20 times two minus half into 20 times, I mean, into 10 times two squared. So 20 times two is 40. Um, 10 by 2 is 5, 5 into 4 is 20 as well, so therefore it'll be 20 meters. So 2 seconds ago, the ball would be 20 meters above. Um, now, the ball that's released 3 seconds ago, its height will be h3. That will be 20 times 3 minus half into 10 times 3 squared. So 20 times 3 is 60. Um, minus 10 by 2 is 5, um, 5 into 3 squared is 9, so <clears throat> 9 times 5 is 45, so 60 minus 45 gives you 15 meters. So um, the positions of the other balls will be 15, 20, and 15. Now, if you look at that, the only option that says 15, 20, 15 is option B. So option B turns out to be the right option. The other options are incorrect. 
Um, so basically, since we're um, throwing a ball high into the air and it's motion in a straight line, so therefore two of the balls have the same position and one of them is higher than them when, a when someone's juggling the balls. So therefore, C and D are incorrect because the options increase. Um, like it's 5, 15, 20, and 5, 10, 20. It doesn't follow that pattern. Option A follows that pattern. However, um, the first and the third balls will be at 15 meters and not 10. So therefore, option B turns out to be the right option. Now, let's look at the final question for the day. Um, a body cools down from 80 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius in 10 minutes when the temperature of the surrounding is 30 degrees Celsius. We need to find the temperature of the body after another 10 minutes. Okay, so let's consider T1 or T initial as 80 degrees Celsius. Let's consider T2 as the temperature after 10 minutes, which is the time period. And T0 is the ambient temperature. All right. So we're going to use Newton's law of cooling. Now, what does this law state? The natural log of initial temperature minus ambient temperature over final temperature minus ambient temperature is equal to a constant K multiplied by the time period of cooling. So in this particular scenario, after the first 10 minutes, um, the natural log of 80 is the initial temperature minus 30 is the ambient temperature over 60 minus 30 equals to K times 10. Now let's consider this to be equation one. Now we're gonna consider T um, be the temperature of the body after another 10 minutes. Now remember, initially it was 80 degrees, then it became 60 degrees and we, we cooled it at the same rate for another 10 minutes, and the temperature is given as T. All right, because we need to find that temperature later. So um, we're going to use Newton's law of cooling again. So here it will be the natural log of 60 minus 30 over T minus 30 equals to K. Let me just rewrite that because it doesn't look too good. So that's basically K multiplied by 10. Now we'll consider this to be equation 2. Now if we look at equations 1 and 2, the right-hand side is the same, 10K. So therefore, equating 1 and 2, we get natural log not lin, um, ln is natural log, so natural log of 80 minus 30 over 60 minus 30 equals natural log of 60 minus 30 over t minus 30. So now, the reason why we do that because the time period of cooling is the same and the constant k you know is a constant value it doesn't change so um so from here since uh, both sides are equal we can cancel out the natural logs um 80 minus 30 comes out to be 50 60 minus 30 comes out to be 30 so that's 5 over 3 and the right hand side will be 30 over 60 minus 30 is 30, and then t minus 30 stays the same. So when we cross multiply this, we get 5t minus 30 times 5, which is 150, equals 30 times 3, that's 90. And uh, 5t equals 
150 plus 9t. 15 plus 9 is 24, so 5t is 240. So therefore, t equals 240 over 5. So case of division, 5 fours are 20, 4 is left. We got 40, 8 fives are 40. Remainder is 0, so the quotient is 48. So the temperature after the second interval of 10 minutes would be 48 degrees Celsius. So um, if you look at our options, you can see that the correct option is option B, 48 degrees Celsius. We used um, Newton's law of cooling, and the time interval was the same. The constant stays the same. So we can equate the left-hand side of both equations across both cases. And while by doing that, we get the temperature, the final temperature that the body is at 48 degrees Celsius. So that concludes this episode of SNUSAC Questions with Solutions. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audios. You can also click the bell icon present below the video to get the latest updates from our channel. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.